Hi guys, welcome to this Microsoft Excel session. What we're going to look at in this module is how to create some dynamic graphs. So this first one is using the SUMIF function and the DATE function. So first of all, I've got some sales figures across the top, and then I've got six months worth of sales figures in row four and five, and this is how it works. If I type a date in this cell, so I'm going to type Feb 20, I'm gonna press enter, all the dates will look back for six months from that February date, and the graph will pick that up. So basically the graph, first of all, is just looking at that data there. So if I select the data, you can see what the graph is looking at. That is just a straightforward graph. Come out of that. So you just select the graph and select the data and then click on chart and pick the type that you want. That's all that is. Now what triggers it is this. So in this cell, so I'm in cell F4, there is the date function, which is basically looking at G4, where I've typed February. 2020 and pulling back one month from that so it's saying January 2020 and if I click into the formula at the top and click on FX you can see how that one is working so year the year part of that formula is going to return 2020 the month on G4 is the first month and the day is the first day so you've got a minus one on the month so that's why it's coming up with it with the answer one the first month because it's minus one from the second month which was february that is what that function does i'll just click ok to that you can't just type equals g4 minus one because it doesn't work it just comes back with even though it, the date comes back correct it doesn't give you a figure the summary function doesn't work so i'm just going to undo that so I get the, the date function in there. And then all the way back, it's doing exactly the same, just pulling one month off. Now the summit function is what drives this. If I click into this cell, you can see the summit function up there. Now let's see what I've called these rows. So months, if I highlight row one, row one is called months. Row two is called sales. So the summit function looks along the months, when it finds what is in cell B4, so at the minute that is September 19, it brings back the sales figures for September 19, which in this case is that one, if I just colour that one yellow, yellow, yellow. So that's where it's bringing that figure from. Remember, this is the dynamic part, so this, this date will change. When the date changes, the summary function will bring back the relevant figure. So I use this on my own accounts. I, I have it going back 12 months and basically I can type a date on my dashboard, any date. And over the last 12 years that I've had the accounts in this particular Excel file and it will show me back on 30 different charts, looking at different data, um, the information for 12 months. It took me 10 years of teaching that though before I actually did it myself, but it's a great little feature. And that's the first one. The next one is using the offset function. So if I just click click on this sheet, explain the offset function. So first of all, offset by itself, offset A2, which is that one, by three rows. So you've got rows and columns by three rows. And it comes back with the number four. One, two, three, four. The count A function, is basically counting down the column A for any text or any item, not just text, anything. So it won't count blank cells. So there's 12 cells there, and it's coming back with 12. And then the mixed one is looking at A2, counting all the cells, which is 12, and then doing minus 12, and it's coming back with a 1. So that's the count. A function and in fact I should have a count A on there comes back with a 1 um, that only works because these are numbers so count A would pick up any if there was text in there as well whereas a count function on its own does not so that's that and now how does that work on a graph so if I go on to a, the next one this is a 
gas and electric spend for myself. I like to look at last April 2019 against this April. So it's a 13 month graph if you like. But I don't keep adding things onto it. I've got the data on this sheet. And basically I only want it to look at the last 13 months worth of data. Not all of this stuff. All the way back there to when I started doing this 2012. Recording my gas and electric. Just the last 13. Now, how do I do that? I use the offset function. So if I go back to this graph and then pull that down a little bit, oops, pull that down a little bit so you can see the formulas. So the first one is looking at gas and electric data A1. So gas and electric data A1 at the top there. If I go back, it's then counting Count A, gas and electric data, the whole of column A. And then it's doing a minus 13 on it. And then the next one down is doing a minus 12. And so on, minus 11, all the way down to the last one, which says minus 1, which is the last figure that was entered there. Now, if I just pull this back up. So that would sit nice and neatly like that. And let's enter some money for uh, some data for May 2669. I'll do the 1st of May 20. And then this one is going to tell me how many units I've used. Six units. So that won't be much. So I'll put 15 pounds. And then how many days is that? That's not a full month. How many, what is a unit spend? And then do electric, the same sort of thing. I'll type 98111. And how many units I used? 192, so that's more than that. So I'll put £45 in there. And then it gives me a total at the end. And I'll just pull this down. And then what should happen now, if this has worked correctly, I should have that data on my graph. So I have a total of 60 pound, 15 and 45 against last May, which was more than that. Well, it was a similar sort of price actually, 61. But obviously gas and electric is slightly different. My gas price is higher. And to be fair, I didn't really think too much about that, but that is quite a low price for gas. Probably be a bit higher than that. But that's just using the, the offset function, which was this one, and the count A function, which is that one. And then you get this sort of feature as opposed to constantly adding on columns and creating a graph that's huge and then pointless because lots of the data is um, irrelevant. So that's a quick look at two dynamic graphs that you can do in Excel. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you on the next little video. So thank you for your time. See you soon.